Okay, the next one we have here the fortified cassava. So, this um, genetically modified cassava has been done in 1955. So, this is um, modified cassava. Cassava characterized here by being resistant to pests and the different viruses. So, cassava is alternative for your potato because this one will have your high in starch or your carbohydrates, your polysaccharide. Um, however, later on, the farmers actually able to observe that uh, the, uh, for the, the modified cassava will try to lose its ability to be resi resistant here to the pests and the viruses. This is again effective later on. Then we have here the papaya. This is a rainbow papaya, which has been uh, modified here in Hawaii. So this uh, modified papaya here, the rainbow papaya, is uh, resistant here to pests, including your uh, papaya ring spot virus. Then we have also here the banana. So um, modified banana would be resistant here to different fungal infections, and that one is high also in vitamin A. Then we have your eggplant BT brinjal. So the brinjal from the um, India. So BT again, the mean to say the gene of this uh, BT eggplant here uh, came from your Bacillus thuringiensis. Specifically, we have here your CRY1AC that would render this uh, modified uh, eggplant to be resistant to your uh, shoot and uh, fruit border. So, so we have the specific species of your worm. Leucinode or Boralis. Okay, so this one has been uh, engineered here in India. So that's Maharashtra Hybrids, uh, Hybrid Seeds Company in India. The one trying to modify this BT eggplant. Okay, the next one we have here the tomatoes. So it has been commercially named here as Clover Saver. This one has been approved in the U.S. market, but not in the Euro. So this uh, modified tomatoes characters here by uh, with us a slowdown in its ripening process by slower slowing also here the the softening of this one while able to maintain the same color and same uh, same flavor. Another one has been being added here by anti sense gene, so that would also help here prevent the rotting process. Then we have here the modified apple here. So for the modified apples, it's being modified here by uh, deactivating the enzyme PPO or the polyphenol, polyphenol oxidase. So this is the enzyme responsible here for the browning or color of the apple here. So pagkakit kasi di ba pag brown, sa so parang feeling natin bulok siya. So to prevent the browning process, try to deactivate the enzyme PPO. So this is being the effect of the modification here in your apple. Another one we have here the peas. For the peas here, so it's been injected, incorporated here by the gene coming from your uh, kidney beans that would render it to be resistant here to your pesticides. Another one we have here the yellow crook neck squash or you call this one that would render that one to be resistant here to different viruses. Then we have your alfalfa, so this is a legumes. We try to grow here uh, basically for all year round. So they try to modify this one. So it's highly nutritious, leguminous. Um, and fortify this one to become here high in the vitamin B, C, D, and E. And then this also render this uh, legume here to be resistant to your glyphosate herbicide. Okay, then we have here the impact of your genetically modified uh, organism here. So, again, the insertion of the foreign DNA, which is much more um, uh, good genes, would try to affect see, the growth pattern or even the production rate of your genetically modified uh, organisms. I mean to say it would try to increase here the production and uh, also try to affect the breeding time. So, we're talking about like Okay, so since uh, genetically modified the uh, organism here would be able to grow at a faster time, so because of that, there will have your much advantages of that. So number one, it would save time and money uh, in terms, I mean in part of the farmers, because of course you're growing, your, growing the crops for more than a year, for example, or for longer duration, it would entail much time and money for the farmers. By having that genetically modified objects grow, 
or crops that one organism here grow at a lesser time duration, so it would save money. Okay, but at the same time, it would have here produce a higher yield for the crop production of your farmers. Second one, so you are what you're producing here is a designer crop. So we speak about designer crop. So you are you try to predetermine already the products of what would be the quality, what would be the characteristic of your GMO. And therefore, it you can fortify that one with the different vitamins, or you could render that one to be resistant to your pesticides or even your herbicides. So that would render that one to be an advantage. The third one we have here the saline salinity of the soil. So um what do i mean by that one so there are some uh land wherein uh, they will not allow the growth of other crops but then again then, although that crops for example could not able to grow in that particular land area so there's no it become not a problem anymore here because you can modify your plant in order for that to adapt to the environment so therefore it would help you then the farmers here to grow with the crops in whatever salinity of the soil is. And the fourth one, we have here export quality. So again, there are some genetically modified, uh, like your papaya, for example, here we're able to um, reduce, for example, here the ripening process or even your tomatoes. So therefore, if that crabs would have a good export quality, at the same time, that one would able to be available for all year round. Because there are some crabs that we call seasonal crabs, so, by having this GMO, pwede sila throughout the year magkakaroon ka ng products. Okay, we have here the disadvantages, however, here. So, there's always a problem since uh, we don't know the extent of the effects of modifying the genes of your organisms. So, it might be, number one, it will have your health um, effects in uh, the human consumption. So, it might result here some allergic reaction or another one. We are questioning here how toxic the toxicity of that. Um, of course, the extent of that, we don't know really the effects. And another one, it might also be the cause of the infertility or sterility, although there are just still under studies. So again, only that uh, we are not certain about the effectivity or the, uh, the, the safety of that the GMO. Another one, since you are modifying your crops, it might also here to super weeds. So, being super weeds, so hindi na siya napapatay ng mga ordinary natin ng herbicide, pesticides. So, baka kaya pag weeds siya, it would affect the growth of your mga important na crops. Okay, since minodify mo ito, ay hindi, okay, baka papatay niya yung ating mga important crops. And at the same to other crops, so kaso nga lang, hindi mo rin siya mapapatay. It's because na highly resistant na siya to pesticides or herbicides. So that would be some of the consequences of your GMO. Okay, so in your PowerPoint, there's, there are different, uh, I mean, there are okay, slides that try to pertain about the different advantages and disadvantages of your GMO. I'll kindly go through with that na lang. Okay, lastly, we have here the most frequently asked questions regarding your GMO. Number one, so again, are GMO safe? So that we don't really know about or the extent of the effect of that. So we're not sure of that. Another one is how are they produced? What are the major issues that need to be considered here when you are, if you wanted to consume, for example, the GMO? The fourth one, okay, which types or what are the GMOs that has been identified here or has been utilized already by ASEAN countries? Okay, so again, these are the most frequently asked questions regarding your GMs. Okay, so this is all about this topic. Okay, thank you for listening.